Hey, what's up? What's going on? I want to say hashtag missing DC girls. We're going to be talking about obsession and dark desires. Um, season four, episode two. This show is real. It's on the ID channel. And basically just another cautionary tale. And we're going to be going over some things about the show. But I may say don't do this, don't do that. Not blaming the victim at all. But just for future references for other people that find themselves in the same situation as a as Latasha. So basically, Latasha is a single mother of two. She's a medical assistant for a big um, firm or hospital, and it's the largest in Omaha, Nebraska. So basically, she has a daughter that's 16 years old, and she has a son that is seven at the time. And basically, she's a soccer mom. Her daughter just got on the cheerleading squad. And her son, Kobe, plays soccer, and she's at his soccer game, and she meets his coach. And the coach says to her, hey, Latasha, something. And um, and then she's like, Damon. And so they, they grew up together, and they went to school together, so they knew each other. And they exchanged phone numbers, because he is the coach of her son's soccer team, basically. So... Um, they exchange number. He constantly calls her ever since he got her number, and he's pressuring her to hang out, to meet up, basically. So basically, um, Natasha buys her fo her first home, and she's really thrilled and she's really excited about having her own home for her two children. And this is a milestone in her life. So um, she invites um, Damon, the soccer coach, over to her house for a barbecue because she's breaking into her house. It's like a housewarming party and she's barbecuing and everything. And her family's there and he's playing with her son, Kobe. They playing soccer. And Latasha's mom's like, oh my God, he's Mr. Right. He's the one. Okay. So anyways, I'm going to pause for a second and talk about, okay, just because someone from your past comes back into your life doesn't mean that you have to get involved with them. And second of all, if you're going to, um, have a date with someone that you haven't seen in almost 20 years or 30 years, maybe you should start off slow and not bring them to your house and not let them know where you live at. Just for people that might find themselves in a situation because it's, it's better to be safe than sorry. And um, you also got to understand too is the person you met, you knew 20 years ago, it's not the same person that you meet today because they've been through things, they have done things. So they're not that same sweet, friendly kid anymore. So always take that into account ability for anybody in the few, if you may find yourself in a situation because basically Natasha's story is to help all of us and um, to sh to share her story so we won't have to go through the same thing that she's went through and she's very courageous and brave by sharing her story with the world so anyways um so she knew damon from grade school high school whatever and so you know she invites him over to the barbecue and then after that you know they have a nice little goodbye and he makes her feel special he's sweet he's nice he makes her feel like a woman he makes her feel like she's she's everything and she feels like wow he desires he desires me and this is wonderful but it doesn't last that long as she says Natasha so all of a sudden out of nowhere within a, a couple of weeks Damon is like oh she's getting ready to go to a Christmas party she's putting on makeup he goes why are you putting on makeup um why are you putting on makeup who are you going to try to meet at the Christmas party who are you dressing up for are you cheating on me and that's the first sign right there. When someone is that jealous, right off a of jump street, you need to run, carry your bags and bounce, run. And basically, ever since they, her and Damon started dating, he's at the house all the time. And if a man is always at your house and you're never at his house, you, you got to throw up a red flag and see what's going on. Why am I not at his house? Does he have a house? Where does he live at? Like, you got to get to know him and know things about him. Because basically, he has now kind of almost like moved into her house and she don't even know this man basically he's a coach of her son's soccer team and he tells her he has his own w w window business basically um with, with a friend or whatever but she hasn't met his family and she hasn't been to his house so basically um he's infringing on her life 
you know, it's not 50-50. So always be aware of that too when you're dating somebody, man or woman. If it's always at your house and you don't know anything about the person because basically you want to get to know the person because when people rush into a relationship and they rush to want to be with you so fast and want to start moving so fast and so quick it's because whatever scam that they're running they can't hold it up so long you know some people know that they have dark sides some people know that they are negative and and they're not really worthy of being with so they like to rush into relationships and get with you and try to woo you off your feet and then come in with the crash and a crash fire bombs grenades and everything so they have to move fast because they can't keep this um this game this show this acting up you know because they can't really hold it together that long before they show you their true colors so anyways back to um damon he's always at natasha's house he's always there with her and she's like feeling like damn my space is being taken away he's always here and basically um I, don't, I guess he stopped coaching her son, I don't know. Then she finds out that he has a drinking problem. So take time to get to know somebody because you start to learn things about them the more that you're around them. But basically try to be around them in public settings, in public places, at their place. See how they are, see how they act, see how they act in public with you. Because if you're out in public with you and they're acting jealous and insecure, that's another red flag for you to get your bags and move on. So anyways... Um, so he's doing all this and then so now she's feeling like okay I want to break up with him this is how Natasha's feeling because he's constantly calling her 24 7 when she's out when she's anywhere and she gets like four to five calls within an hour text or a phone call um, him asking her what she's doing where she's at basically and then she's feeling like you know what let me just go home be so he can stop calling me first of all he shouldn't be just chilling at your house like that mm -mm. but anyways but this is a lesson that's learned and luckily she learned from this mistake and she can leave, she can leave the situation with her life because a lot of people don't leave with their life, you know? And that's one thing I do like about this show. A lot of people that tell their story actually are alive. A lot of people do get killed on the um, ID channel, Crime Crimes Investigation Network, basically. So anyways, um, so she's feeling like she's going to break up with him after New Year's because you know they made plans for New Year's so they're supposed to be having a New Year's dinner and Damon wants chicken on the menu that stereotype with black people and chicken is always there and but who doesn't like chicken well I don't eat meat right now I'm a, I'm become a vegetarian again and I was once um vegan for about four years now I'm going back to not eating meat again so anyways um, so he wants chicken for dinner, but she ends up changing the menu to stir fry for New Year's and, you know, the house is decorated. It's nice. And so he gets home and he's drinking, he's already drunk or whatever. And he sees that she's making stir fry. And he was like, I want chicken, bitch. And then he's like, give me the car keys. She was like, no, because you can, um, you you've been drinking. And he was like, what the fuck did I tell you? And he grabs her up by the neck and yokes her up. And he holds her. I think he hits her as well. And he's just holding her up to the wall by her neck and everything. And it's just like, yo, whoa. And her son is in the next room. She's worried about her son, and her, but her daughter's not home. So she's like, okay. So then after that, she wakes up in the morning. She sees the bruises on her neck. Her and Damon talk. And they agree to separate and, and dissolve the relationship, basically. But not in Damon's head. You know this, you know what the show is called, Obsession, Deadly Desires. <laughs> so anyways, he continues to call her. He continues to call her over and over and over, showing up at her house with, um, without her permission. And he's just basically a pain in the fucking ass. So he's all over the place. He's at her house. Um, and she's asking him to leave and he doesn't leave. And then so now he's kind of like stalking her. Now he's calling her, calling her at work 24-7. He's showing up at her house unannounced and everything like that. And so like she doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know if she should call the cops. She doesn't know if she should let her family know, her mother know, or let anybody know what's going on with this abusive situation and being stalked and harassed by this man, Damon. First of all, and for future reference, for anybody in this type of situation or 
begin to get into a situation like this, let your family know. Because if you can't trust your own mother with this information, then something's really wrong. And let your friends know, let your family know. Don't be embarrassed because it's a situation that can happen to anybody. Anybody can get fooled and be tricked and bamboozled, everything. It happens to the best of us. But let people know that care for you so you can have protection, you can have help. Don't try to go in the situation alone because you don't know what you're up against. Especially if you don't do a background check, you don't get to know any information on this guy. You don't know what someone's mental capabilities are. And if they feel like they have nothing to lose, um, they're going to go the whole nine. So just be aware to let people know. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. Just like, just suck it up. Like, hey, I, I messed up. I made a mistake. I brought this guy. I brought this female in my life. And this is totally tragic situation. And they can may say, I told you so, or I can't believe you. But you know what? Let that information be known so you can have other eyes and ears to protect you. That's what family's for, I'm assuming. So... Anyways, the last time that he's in her house, he sneaks up on her while she's in bed. So she finally calls the cops. The cops come. He exits the house and he runs out. And um, the cops the cops arrest him. He does a day in jail. He calls her from jail and be like, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. I didn't mean to do this. I just want us to get back together. And so then you have um, the next day, a couple of weeks later... You know, she's pulling up to her house. Mind you, this is her house she just brought. And she's a single mom as well. So anyway, she pulls up to her house. She's with her son, Damon. I mean, she's with her son, Kobe. And Damon's outside the door, right? So in a situation like this, if you pull up in front of your house and the person that's harassing you and stalking you is in front of your house and you your car is still on, hit reverse and get the fuck out of there. Bounce. Leave. But she doesn't because she feels like maybe... She can talk some sense into him. When somebody shows you that they're delirious, um, they're not coherent, or even before that, they show any type of stalking or obsessive behavior, bounce, move, because you don't know what their mental capabilities are. So don't underestimate crazy people. So anyways, um, she tells her son Kobe to go upstairs and get some sleep. Basically... I would have been coaching my son, even though he's seven, if he can if he can hit a soccer ball, he can dial three digits. I was like, anytime you see this dude, um, Damon, call 911, you know? He'll have a cell phone on deck. But anyways, Kobe goes upstairs, he goes to sleep, and so she lets um, Damon in the house. She, she assumes Damon is sober, but once she shuts the door, he starts drinking so he's drinking and um she's now she's scared she knows she made a mistake she don't know how she's gonna get out of this and basically she's thinking about her son at this point so um damon takes her upstairs to the bathroom she gets into the bathroom it's a bubble bath there's candles there's roses you know he's doing a whole nine like hey you know i love you let's be together and she he's like get in the tub get in the fucking tub or whatever so then she was like to keep the peace i got in the tub you know he rapes her she falls asleep. When she wakes up, he's gone. And so she doesn't want to go to the cops because she's she's figuring how could she prove this. She doesn't have enough evidence. Um, who's going to believe her? Because she has changed her locks a few times. She's changed her phone number a few times, but he's able to get in the house. And I believe he's able to get in the house because he does windows. So he's able to get in through the windows, basically. This is my opinion. Um, but that she never mentioned how he was able to get into her house because she changed the locks over and over so basically if you're, if you're in a situation do change your locks or ne never come back to the house or get an alarm system where if the windows open the doors open or anything the alarm will go off immediately and it'll go straight to the cops basically if you can afford it because it does cost money and basically, let your neighbors know what's going on so you can have a neighborhood watch. You know, you don't want people in your business, but you know what? You have to protect yourself. You have to protect your family and send emails to yourself. Send information where you can prove your case. And don't think that you're not able to prove your case until they tell you. So try to prove your case in any way, shape, or form, especially when you have children, especially if you want to live. You have to take all the measures that you can take to... to save your life and save your children's life basically so then this dude is crazy or get a gun you know do whatever you got to do 
Um, especially if it's a situation like this where you're not antagonizing it, where you're not being the one that's causing the drama. But if you're in fear of your life and fear of your children's life, you have to take all the measures you can take. And you need to get the support you need to get from your family, your community, and the police. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed because you know what? You would rather be ashamed and embarrassed than to have your life taken away or having one of your loved ones or your children's life taken away. So, you know what? Put your pride to the side and do what you got to do. I'm not talking about Natasha. I'm just talking about for future reference for anybody that may become in a situation, even for myself. This is advice for myself as well. So, anyways, um... So one day she comes home. She's with her and her daughter. And then, you know, Natasha says she usually leaves the house... It's kind of like um, scattered stuff there because they rush and get getting dressed in the morning, rushing the kids off to school, and she's she's going to work as well. So she noticed the house is immaculate, clean, and then she walks to the house. She doesn't see anything. Her daughter enters the house and looks at the table, and he Damon has made dinner, a full course seven meal dinner, and he texts her and said, "Hey, enjoy the food or whatever." Just totally crazy bullshit. So um, Natasha decides to stay at friends and re relatives houses <laughs> excuse me and things like that but she can't keep doing that and then so she decides to just ride around and not be home at night because she doesn't want to be home at her brain house she just brought her dream house so but she can't afford to keep driving around wasting gas or whatever so basically she comes home and she's up all night while the kids are sleeping so while the kids are asleep she's up at three four five o'clock in the morning cleaning the house wherever and face boys washing walls doing all this goddamn bullshit that is real messed up and she only known to do for two minutes and this is what he's doing to her but you also have to take measures to make sure something like this don't happen to you or your family in the future for anybody that's watching this video so from from there um she finally goes to get a restraining order and she brings her mom she she conceals some information from her mom she doesn't let her mom know how bad and terrible the situation is which you should it's your mom she gave you life and if she's there with you you trust her as, as some shape or form let people know what's going on so she actually gets the restraining order but it doesn't do anything this guy's still coming through her house and he and he tries to pick up her son um kobe while kobe's walking home from school and then he tries to pick up her son from school he goes to the school and he tells them that he's his stepfather blah 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 and he's here to pick him up natasha sent him so the school calls natasha natasha said no and then finally natasha says okay i'm taking this to the police because now he's not targeting me anymore he's targeting my child so she goes to the police she goes to the judge he's arrested and um he gets 38 years in prison for this harassment. This is no joke. 38 years. You know, it took her a while to make sure she dotted all her I's and crossed her T's. But eventually she got him sentenced to prison for 36 years or 38 years. And he's never going to be bothering anybody again. And she feels that now her kids are grown. When he gets out of prison, her daughter will be a grown woman and have her own family. Her son, Kobe, will be a grown man at this time. So basically, watch your back. Be for, be careful who you decide to spend time with. Make sure you get to know them. Don't bring people to your house unless you know them. Do background searches on them. Get to know their friends and their family. Go out into public with them and see how they act, how they treat you, how they behave. If they start this jealous stuff, calling you 24-7, that's, that's uncontrollable. That you feel like this is too much, then it's probably too much. Always trust your instincts and trust, into your, trust yourself and believe in yourself. And most likely... You can get yourself out of these situations or you will never be in situations like this because the devil does wear, comes in sheep clothing and he does come in disguises. But you got to be able to unmask this devil by not letting him in or her into everything that you do everywhere you go that knows your schedule that can have access to your house. And you know what I mean? And then let 
other people around you know what's going on. Like let the school know, let your children know that hey, if you see that if you see this male, or you see this female, it's a problem. Dial 911. Have have cell phones on deck for your children. Like you really have to protect yourself and your children because there's a lot of people here that have nothing to lose and they don't mind taking your life or someone life close to you to hurt you. So be safe, be careful and be wise. Please like my video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'll be greatly appreciated. Hashtag missing DC girls. One love. I'm out.